So when you're in a plane, sometimes you experience a kind of humming that goes up and down. So what do you think is happening? Well, it's actually the two engines emitting sound at near same frequency, resulting in a beat phenomenon. Great to have you back. And what we will learn in this lesson is what are beats and how do they get produced? Honestly speaking, when I learned beats years ago, I had found the concept very confusing, but eventually found a fantastic way of understanding the concept. And that's what I will share with you today. Well, before we dive into this, I'd like you to press the subscribe button so that you continue to get notifications on all new videos from me. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and also share with someone who can benefit from it. So let's say you hear two sounds that have a frequency of 398 Hertz and 402 Hertz. I'm sure none of us can tell the difference between the two since the frequencies are really close. However, when we actually hear the two together, what we'll end up hearing is a frequency of 400 Hertz, which will be the average of the two frequencies. Again, you, you cannot quite make out the difference between a 400 Hertz frequency and 398 or 402 Hertz. But, but when you hear the frequency of 400 Hertz, that is a combination of the two different sound frequencies. What your ears can make out is a rhythmic variation in the intensity of the sound that goes up and down in slow wavering beats that have a frequency of their own and this frequency will be 402 minus 398 or 4 hertz. And this is what we call the beat frequency. So let us analyze the whole thing mathematically. Consider two different waves and the equations we take for these two waves are, let us say, time dependent. And let us say your first wave is S1 is equal to Sm cos omega 1t. And your second equation is S2 is equal to Sm cos omega 2t. So the waves have the same amplitude but different angular frequencies or simply uh, different frequency in Hertz. So what would happen when you hear these two sound waves simultaneously? To start with, you can make one quick observation that if both had the same frequency, it would be a simple situation where the two waves would reinforce each other at all times and you get a wave that has an amplitude two times SM. Well, that's not really the case here. And what we can see is that initially when you start at time t equal to zero, the two waves are in step or uh, phase and continue to some extent. And then slowly they start getting out of phase. It is something like two runners starting from a start line and one runs slightly faster than the other. And initially the two are almost running near each other, but as time passes, the spacing between the two runners increases. So if you get back to these equations and assume that omega 1 is greater than omega 2 and we combine the two waves using superposition principle, what we get is S is equal to S1 plus S2, which is equal to Sm cos omega 1t plus cos omega 2t. So using this trigonometric identity where cos alpha plus cos beta is so s then equals if you use this trigonometric identity 2 times sm cos of half omega 1 minus omega 2t multiplied by, so let me make some space here, multiplied by cos of half omega 1 plus omega 2 times t. And let us say if we term this part as omega dash, so we say well omega dash is equal to half of omega 1 minus omega 2 and we say omega is equal to half of omega 1 plus omega 2. Then 
we can write this equation as s is equal to 2sm cos of omega dash t and if you take the whole thing in bracket into cos of omega t. So we can treat this equation as a resultant wave that has omega as the angular frequency and this part as the amplitude that you can see varies with time at an angular frequency omega dash. So you see that the amplitude of this wave itself is changing with time and I'm sure uh, a lot of us would be confused by now. So let us interpret the beat phenomenon the way I did a few years ago and to do so we will deconstruct this equation part by part. So let us put some real values in this equation and say that the two waves we are dealing with have a frequency of 402 hertz and 398 hertz respectively. Then the corresponding omega 1 and omega 2 would be this which of course is nothing but 2 pi f. Once we have omega 1 and omega 2 we get omega and omega dash and therefore your final equation of the resultant wave in the form we have derived earlier would be this where we assume SM is 1.5. So let us take this part and we call it the first part of the equation and draw a plot of this versus time. Now to do that we tabulate the values of this part for various time values and this is what we get. Then if you make a graph what you get is a smooth slow elongated graph like this which makes a lot of sense since this frequency is so low that the wave will be long. You can see that if this corresponds to 402 and this to 398 hertz, the difference is 4 and if you divide by 2, the frequency is just 2 hertz and in angular frequency terms, it shows as 13. Now, let us take this part and tabulate its values with time and this is what you get. Well, if you plot these values against time, what you get is this graph. So if you're surprised to see the crazy zigzag, you should not be since the frequency here is so high at 398 plus 404 divided by 2, that is 400 hertz, that is the number of vibrations happening per second is really high. Now, if you multiply the two parts, what you get is the actual displacement of the resultant wave. So let us go ahead and multiply the two to get the values and now if you make a graph of time versus this what you see is the graph of the resultant wave that is an output of the two waves with frequencies 402 and 398 hertz and if you see this as a cosine wave uh, which it is then the amplitude of this wave is this that is varying slowly with time. So it's kind of an envelope that gives shape to the resultant wave that has an angular frequency of omega. So let me summarize. This is the equation of the resultant wave. This is its amplitude and the amplitude of the wave varies with time. So you see that it gets loud here and silent here and this high and low keeps happening so this hum that is a result of high sound and silence is what you call a beat where the waves add and cancel and then again add and cancel and it keeps happening. Now if you wish to calculate the beat frequency, you can see that the high sound happens at max amplitudes and it happens twice. Once when cos omega dash t is equal to plus one and once when cos omega dash t is equal to minus 1. So it happens twice in a cycle. So you must know that you can hear the high sound whenever the wave hits the amplitude irrespective of it being plus or minus. And since cos omega dash t has an angular frequency of omega 1 minus omega 2 upon 2, the angular frequency of the beat and let's call it omega b should equal 
2 times omega dash. So this is your omega dash, which is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 upon t. Then the beat frequency would be 2 times omega dash, or we can say that omega b would equal to 2 times omega dash, which is equal to 2 times omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by 2 which equals omega 1 minus omega 2. So, your beat frequency is nothing but the difference of two angular velocities or you could also say it's a difference of the two frequencies. So, what you can say here is that your frequency difference here is equal to 402 minus 398 hertz and therefore your beat frequency here is 4 hertz. So if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.